I, I may have started with a spark, like, oh, this is wonderful. I can't mm -hmm. wait to write this. But the moment I have to start thinking about it for real right. and start constructing the story, I'm just worried. It's terrifying. It's terrifying, but it also is incredibly exhilarating. And there's a kind of there is a kind of collective brain when you get 10 or 12 really smart people in a room together for 25 or 30,000 hours. I write for that thrill, that moment. Right. And I get it when I see somebody doing it, and I get it when I do it. If I know, oh, this is going to work. And I don't, I'm not always right, obviously. Sometimes you're like, oh, I scored. And then you should do it to an audience, and they're like, you didn't. When we started doing The Simpsons, and we used to edit the soundtracks, which was the first thing, I said, you know what? This is a radio show. This, you know, like the visuals help, but the rest of it is so rich, you don't really need to see it. I like to populate the worlds that I create with people who don't want to be in that world or rebel against that world or are very uncomfortable in that world or are trying to explain that world. That's, you know, that that's what I identify with most as a storyteller. I can come up with a story sometimes and two minutes that actually works and becomes an episode and then we'll sit yeah. around for two weeks in the room and you know we'll sit there for an hour and nobody says a word and I, I get frustrated really yeah what's that like uh, depressing uh, Buffy came from uh, a love of horror movies a job at a video store um, and, uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a certain feminist bent that made me cranky you know, people think writers write dialogue. They don't. They write situations. They write scenes. They write things that happen. You know, there, you, before movies had sound, people didn't talk. A lot of that has to do with tone, you know. Um, finding that a show can uh, inhabit, that, that various tones can, be, can, can sustain in a show, I think is really important. Uh, that a show can have comedy and melodrama and... Uh, pathos all in one episode. So you're funnier now than when you started. Right now, no, no, not well, not this moment. I thought I was really funny when I sat down, and now <laughs> three minutes later, I don't think I'm as funny. What about timing? Is timing instinctual, comedic timing, or is that something that can be at least learned? No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to need to write, and you have to need to write about something. When I look back at the stuff I wrote 18 years ago and I thought I was amusing, it's so terrible and so lacking in, in any type of discipline. And I think uh, the more you do it, the more you find the problems and, and the easier they become to solve. You know, necessity becomes inspiration. Ken and I would come back um, at 11 o'clock on Saturday with a writer's assistant and we'd write the show for Monday. Do you miss those days? Not at all. <laughs> it was <laughs> the cheesy answer is actually sort of the most sincere, which is write for yourself. Is there any part of your life that isn't fodder for comedy? I'm not going to use this. <laughs> <laughs>